Hey guys, Damnala Chuda Joy. I hope everybody is doing okay. Uh, today, something came up in my mind, you know, some crazy thoughts. And before I lose it, maybe I should just uh, record it. And um, <clears throat> I just realized that uh, in the rules of men, the way we live, rules made by men, yeah, I mean mankind, okay. Um, in our system that we put in, nobody, no one wants to be the beggar. The beggar is at the bottom, you know? The homeless, the one in, in the street begging because he's powerless. He, he depends, his next meal depends on what the other guy, what the people give him in kind heart, you know, uh, because they feel sorry for him or he's just not capable of uh, feeding himself or being responsible. He's looked, he's looked upon as a, a bum, a bum, you know, the word bum, well, it's an insult. If someone come, comes up to you and say, you are a bum. Uh, it's like an insult. It's not something positive, you know. So this is uh, the hierarchy of uh, the society that we have all over the world. It's not just in America or Europe. Even in um, the poorest country in the world, uh, there are some rich, very rich people, powerful with villas and swimming pools and all that. And then, not too far, you have someone who who's just uh, lives in destitution, you know? Don't have water, don't have clean water, hasn't showered for a long time. You know what I mean? It's a miserable misery, you know? Uh, so, you know, everything that I'm saying to you now, uh, you're probably saying to yourself, okay, well, you spent so much time. You took time to make a video on this. We already know this stuff. So, what's next? Well, it dawned on me that, um, yeah, that's mankind. That's our rules. Our hierarchy. But when it comes to God, you know, and I'm not going to preach to you. I'm not... No, I'm not here to preach for you. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a diacon. I'm not a case. I'm not trying to convert you to anything. I don't have the power to do so. Only the priest can convert you because he's the one who's going to teach you faith and then baptize you. I don't have the power to teach or baptize. So don't worry. I'm not here to, to convert you at all because I don't have the power to do that. Uh, nor the will. I don't even have the will to convert you. But, just a thought. When it comes to God, and God's kingdom and all that, um, we are required to beg. <laughs> That's our job. The best beggar is the one who will enter heaven. You know something? Uh... If you don't beg, you don't enter. <laughs> That's the very job that we, we don't want to uh, embody, you know. Uh, that's what's required for you to, to enter heaven. Isn't that, that's the, the irony that I saw in uh, the two worlds. The world of mankind... A beggar is the one that nobody wish. Your parents don't wish you to be a beggar, you know. Um, uh, the skills of begging, the will of begging, all that is. People go to school not to become that, you know. You know. Uh, but when it comes to religion, kingdom of God, you know the mass itself. Is begging, is you begging God to forgive you, to uh, 
to spare you from hell, uh, to protect you while you're alive, to protect you, your kids, your, your loved ones, your country, you pray for the for peace in your country, uh, for pro, uh, for fertility, for uh, the harvest, uh, you know the farmers. Um, you know, I remember right after 9/11, people were praying on TV. You know, for maybe a month. A month or something, every religion, religious leader will come to on TV and they all do their prayer, they parade around, and all of a sudden it stopped, you know. Uh, they couldn't do this anymore because they go back to their um, hip, hypocrisy, right? The, their money-making machine that they are used to. And now they are, they're back to where they were, you know. Um, the same thing with... Uh, the COVID, when COVID was around, all these religious leaders came and they told you their side of things and they made, they had, they increased their followers uh, by maybe, I don't know, I don't want to say, but they had, they had a lot of followers. But then later on, people, now that they are out there, their, um, their homes and they go back to their regular life less and less they will spend time with religious leaders so it's just momentarily but they're not begging so the heading of uh, the main point of my video is begging begging is uh, that's I think what it was what, what the way I understand begging is you when you are free from your ego, you know, and you're saying, I surrender. I have no power. I don't want, uh, even if I have power in doing things or accomplishing things, I don't want to use them. I surrender to a higher power than me. And uh, I, I'm going to put my trust in that power. And, uh, I'm no longer, I don't want to fight no more. Um, so, your ego, your anger, your, um, your money, your lack of money, your uh, disagreements with people, your wife, kids, friends, job, location, the temperature, maybe the winter is too harsh on you, maybe the summer is too harsh on you. Um, all these things, wherever, why you, this or your environment, the, the effect that it has. Or you could be running a marathon and you can't, your body is like, can't take it no more, and you pray, and somehow you're running but you don't feel your legs anymore, but you're still running, and you finish the marathon. I guess that's probably how Haile, Haile Gabriel Selassie was uh, when he was running. After a while, he's just mechanically running, but he doesn't feel his legs. His body is just out of his body, really. Um, so begging is being free, recognizing that you're free from you, all your human um, attributes, if you will. And you become just a soul in front of God. You you are powerless in the eyes of men, but that's when you are really a man. That's the only time you're really truly a human being. It's kind of scary if you understand what I'm saying. Is that you? You purely a human being at that moment. You're like a baby just born, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, a baby has no power. It's, 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 it relies on you to feed it, to teach it, to... So, I'm sorry, I say it, I say him or her. No? Uh, let's, we're going to keep it uh, respectful. Um, 
So you're really a pure human being when you're begging. Who wants to be at that level? Because you are uh, vulnerable. Nobody wants to be vulnerable in, in that state of vulnerability, you know. Um, the other day I watched uh, Anthony Joshua. I'm a fan of his um, boxing. He's a boxer, I don't know if you know. British boxer. Um, and he was defeated for the second time with Usyk, who retained the, the belts. And uh, Anthony Joshua broke in tears uh, after the fight, saying that he, he just couldn't accept his defeat and all that. But little did he knew, that's when everybody recognized how human he is and it's okay to be defeated because sometimes when you're defeated you actually win and um, um, in, his, in his mind he's humiliated he didn't get this belt it, this is what he worked for I'm supposed to win I'm a winner I'm a fighter you know he's, he's living in the men uh, system where he's at the top and if you if you don't win your your shit you know that's what he's he's thinking because that's his understanding of things of course he's in a business where he has to win winning is everything but sometimes when you lose you win people can relate to you cuz think about it 90% of the world they're losers they are losers. I mean, we look, uh, when the British were in power, they ruled over the world. Good, 90% of the world, they, they ruled over. That means 90% of the world was a loser. And that's what created the society where all these slaves of all the world built this thing, that we are enjoying the roads and all that. It was it Somebody went out there and built it, you know, and they didn't build it because they care for us. It's because they were whooped, uh, forced to work. You know, uh, and uh, they were used. Mm, it took a certain amount of labor to do this. So, if you are, if you see a country, a poor country with no infrastructure and all that, that's because they didn't have slaves. <laughs> they didn't, yeah, that's what it is. They didn't have slaves. Yeah. They didn't have slaves to, to do this. Because when you look at Europe, all of it was built by slaves. Yeah, you forget that uh, before the Europeans come to, to Africa to enslave the Africans, they were the Arab, Berber, Turks that used to enslave Africans, sell them to Iraq, to uh, all over the world to, you know, to build things, you know. And before that, Europeans also, before the Arabs, uh, during the Roman Empire, they were slaves, African slaves, uh, being sold all over the world, Europe to build things. Uh, so that kind of that that part of history never is really treated. Um, nobody really wants to talk about it because that would mean that yeah, Europe looks the way it looks today because of slaves, African slaves, building these things not on their own because they were forced to do to do it. When you go to the pyramids, the pyramids were not built by uh, regular Egyptians. No, they were slaves, Egyptian slaves. Then the Israelites came and they, they were put into slavery as well. And that's a sad part to it because the Egyptians said, Oh Pharaoh, we will give our lands and our labor to you. So they made themselves slaves. They gave their freedom to Pharaoh. And because uh, there were famine, you know, famine, there was hardship at the time. So... They gave up their freedom for for Pharaoh, right? 
And when that wasn't enough, and the Israelites, the numbers of Israelites increased, the Israelites became, they were forced into slavery. So now you have two types of slaves. You had the slaves that were uh, Egyptian slaves who, Egyptian citizens who gave their freedom to become slave for the power of Pharaoh in Egypt, the great of Egypt. While these uh, immigrants, the Israelites, who lived okay in the beginning during the first uh, Pharaoh, when that Pharaoh died and the economy of, of Egypt was not doing good, then they said, you know what? These immigrants, their numbers are increasing. We're going to force them into slavery and they put them into, uh, they became slaves. Now you have one part of the population who became slaves on their own land, in their own will. And the other one, they are immigrants and they became slaves by force. But in these two uh, group of slaves, one was spiritually free, which was the Israelites, while the Egyptians were not. Even though they were in their own land and culture and all that, they weren't free because they put themselves, they gave up, they sacrificed themselves for Egypt, the Pharaoh. The fear. And when you look at it, when they became free, when Moses opened the Red Sea and the they became free. Israelites became free. But the Egyptians remained in their darkness, in their society where they had to be. They remained slaves. So, how does that relate to begging? Well, <laughs> here are this, a population who believed in God. Of course, amongst Israelites, there were people who wanted to practice the Egyptian way of, uh, you know, uh, idols and they made like uh, calves, golden calves, and they they kneeled to that, and, but, but that was not accepted by Moses and the others. So, but, so the real Jews, meaning he who believes in God properly, because being Jew is actually faith, not a religion, uh, not a race. Um, um, so those were the ones who were free. They were free spiritually when they were slaves, and they were, became physically free when they crossed the Red Sea. So here are the beggar. The beggar is always free. That's, that's the part that is intriguing to me because, look, you could live in Manhattan. The guy who, who pays twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month in a, in a very luxurious apartment with all these maids and, and stuff like that, but he's not free. He has to pay all these people, you know. Look at Donald Trump. He's not free. He has all, he's always trouble following him. It's always something. He can't walk the street on his own. He's not free. Yet, two blocks down from Fifth Avenue, uh, there will be a homeless person who, li who, li who doesn't have anything. He doesn't even have shoes. He eats out of garbage cans. But he's free. He's not worried. Because all the worst things ha has happened to him. He has been raped, uh, beat up, the, everything that humanly you could think of has happened to him so now he has nothing to fear i mean what's the worst that can happen die he'll die that's it so it reminds me of um the, the, the story in the bible where uh, uh alazar is uh i believe it's alazar he's a poor man he eats uh, the remains of uh the food that this rich man throws at the dogs and after the dogs have eaten, he, he eats the, the thing. And one day he dies and uh, the rich man dies as well. And once the rich man goes into the, the lake of fire, while Alazar is being held in the arms of uh, Abraham, and the rich man says, you know, you know the story. Okay, so here's the thing. 
the poor man is the bum, the one that we would not, we would look down on every day when we walk. We pass by him. He is meaningless, right? But yet he's the one that's on top when we die. I thought that was, that's, uh, so basically this world is upside down. It should have been upside down. Yeah, meaning if we wanted to fix this world, it would look not like the way it looks now. I mean, if, you know, I, I hope uh, this video is not too crazy for you guys. Anyway, enjoy your day. Bye.